Length is five. <laughs> I did not pay attention. <laughs> Clara, will you help me out, please? Just the five words that I chose. Yes, and then they're average. Oh. I didn't get that far. I got five words for you. Okay, what are they? Uh, fathers, yield, ground. Hold on. Where's yield? Field. Field. As, as a final. Okay. And then uh, ground, cannot follow this ground, uh, and then unfinished, unfinished work. And you used work? No, Tim? I didn't. What's your fifth word? Oh. Uh, people. Oh, I Not forgot. You. I, I also did uh, and, between living and dead. Living, and, I'm just going to circle that that's and because I found it. All right, so that's three. That has 7, so that's 10, 15, 18, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, divided by 5 would be 6.2. Wow. Yeah, 6.2. Thank you, Clara. All right, front table. I'll let you guys decide who's going to share their five words. Mason is? All right, thanks, Mason. <laughs> um, I, I did that, cons consecrate, living, dedicated, and government. Okay, consecrate or consecrated? Consecrate. Okay, and then that, right? That, okay. Uh, living. Living. Okay. Dedicated. Dedicated. And government. Uh, what was your average? Uh, 8.25. 8.25. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies up here. Who's sharing? Seems like. Who's sharing? Wait. Edith, did you do it? Brooke? I'm just a hosting guest. Did you pick five words? All you had to do is pick five words of your choice. Hence why we all have different words. Sure. Thanks, Brooke. Trey, shh. I came here. Liberty? Start circling too many line. and I can't find them. Have, thank you. And then consecrated, which is on the ninth line. Rated. And then people on the 16th line. I like how you say the 16th line like I have them numbered. Mm -hmm. I should number them, that would be helpful. Of the people, government of the people. Thank you. All right, and what was their average? 6.4. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies over there? Um, mine is also 
Okay, but what are your words? Um, I did liberty in the second sentence. Liberty. Um, nation and a program next to that. Nation. Battlefield, war, ground, unfinished. That's five. Oh. So, no, 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 no. You know why? You know why? No, why? No, it's no. I, no. That's three, six, it. nine, twelve, fifteen. Well, erased ground. 18. I didn't actually do ground. I did die. Because ground was Clara's. So I was just copying her words. So do die. Okay. And that's 7.8. So four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 17, 26, 29, 32, 35, 37. What did you say it was? 7.4. All right, what's the average of the averages? Add all the averages together, divide by the number of averages. Hold on, Colton. What? What? Colton, you raised your hand. Oh, uh, six point four four. Six point four four. Thank you, sir. All right, so. Do you guys think that we overestimated the length of the words or underestimated the average length of the words? How many of you say overestimated? How many of you say underestimated? <laughs> and you are all stinkers. <laughs> Whoa. I said stinkers. There were much worse things in my head I wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, did we overestimate or underestimate? Touche. I'm going to say over. Okay. Well, you guys are going to figure out if you overestimated or underestimated because this time instead of getting to choose, you have to randomly pick your five words using your calculator to so pick five random numbers. I to enter all those. No! No, just shh. Maggie. Yes. Woo! What? What are the buttons we press? No, math. Math. Rubble. Prob. Number five. The words are numbered for you. You're going to go from one to 268. You want it to choose five numbers. You cannot have a repeat number, but if you have two different numbers that happen to both be the, that's okay. Same 
numbers. Okay. Somebody else at that table for me, please. Um, eight. Eight. Fifty-five. 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 F
to what? Thank you. And to 64, 64. Okay, and what was your average? 4.4. 4.4. Thank you. All right, ladies, Brooke did it last. No, Brooke, you did it last time. Somebody else got to step up. Oh, yes. I got close to that. Okay. Hold on, slow down. 151 to what? 226. 226. 25. 25. 239. 239. And what was your average? 3.4. Thank you. All right, Trey. I told you. Ah. All right, Nash did it last time, so Amber. I'm working on my average. Okay. Um, All right, Davis has his average. Okay. I'll come back to you. Go you ahead. Only answer me when I, say it like that. I don't know. Four. Exactly. Exactly. I had okay. Three, three, four, four, and six. Thank you, sir. Yep. Um, <laughs> Maggie, you gave me the numbers last time, right? Yep. So Naomi or Aster. One forty-eight. Oh, no. yeah. Thank you. Two thirty. Two thirty. I got all of those. No what? way. Hold on. What? What's your average? Five point eight. Hold on, Naomi. Five point two. Is that what you said? Five point two. All right. So um, I'm guessing you two have. <clears throat> newer calculators that haven't been used for random digit generating a whole lot and so they are programmed to start at the exact same place in the random digits and so sometimes that does happen no but if you've hit enter a bunch of times it'll have different numbers than somebody who's only done it once or twice all right what are your numbers, Amber? Um, wait, the numbers uh, on the size of the words. Okay. Yes. Um, 262. Okay. 75, 74. Okay. Um, 33. And 15. And the average was what? Not telling you. Thank you. All right, Ty and Megan, which one of you is going to, well, no, not Megan, because her sample's already up there. So you, Ty. I got 1, 33, 74, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, That just guess. I hope you're right, Ty. No, it's actually like four plus six. What is it? Always go with your gut. Always go with your gut. That's what you tell me when I'm taking your test. That's what I tell everybody and what to do. Four point one three, three three, three three three. Not. All right. So, which one do you think was closer? This average of the averages, or this average of the averages? This average of the averages. That's twice you've gotten me with my <laughs> questions today. Touche. All right. Is the warm up tray? Is the warm up average closer? No. Or? That one is. That one. Why? Because there's more. Um, I don't know if the word else is numbers than the other one. Yeah. What, a, what did we do? Because it's an SRS. It's an SRS. Woo! Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we used 
randomness hey, this you, time I'm around. Why did you know that shit? Because <laughs> we used randomness, our average is going to be closer to the actual. The true average for all the words in the Gettysburg Address is 4.28. So we were actually much closer. Um, why do you too? Why did we overestimate in the warm up? Overestimate? Yeah, we overestimated. And what do we do when we choose? We choose words that we like. We choose words that we like. What did you say, Rosie? Your eyes tend to be drawn to the big words, yeah. right? Oh. You're looking at this huge oh, paragraph, <laughs> and Size somebody did pick <laughs> it, okay? <laughs> but we do tend to see the bigger words first, and so we choose those. Randomness, very important when you're doing a sample. All right, so today we're going to talk about inference, and then we're going to talk about some errors that can be made when we sample. It might be helpful if you're facing your paper to write. <coughs> I know. It's a big concept. Colton Morgan, don't you do it. No. All right, so... We always use a sample to give us information about the population. The process of drawing conclusions about a population based on the sample is called inference. because we infer information about the population from what we know about the sample. Drawing inferences about the population from a poor sample is misleading. Poor sampling techniques include, what were the two we talked about yesterday? What are the two bad no. sampling techniques? Convenience. Voluntary response. Voluntary. A good sample always utilizes what? What did we just talk about? Randomness. Randomness. Is that really a word? It is now, even if it's not because I'm using it. paper. An error that is made in the process of taking a sample. Go ahead. That could lead to in accurate information about the population <laughs> is called a sampling error. Now you guys know I'm lazy and the less words I have to write the better so you will see me put SE for sampling error especially because there's so many words in this unit. Speaking of lazy, did you go on your <laughs> No. Oh! I swear you only ask on the days I didn't. I ran five miles yesterday, and then I played an hour of soccer last night. So I slept in this morning. No, in the city league. Speaking of the sign being made up. 
I was talking to Maggie about the Wednesdays. Because the other girls on the teams. All right. A sampling error could be the use of bad sampling methods. What are the bad sampling methods? Convenience and voluntary response. Thanks, Ty. Good job, Tyler. No, it's just Ty. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You know what Trey's is trusting? I don't know. I have a You talk about cold, it's hard as too far. Yeah, hold on. Just get a good heart and get a good name. <laughs> A sampling error could be a problem with the list of individuals that we use to select our sample. That list is known as the sampling frame. When some groups in the population are left out of the process of choosing the sample, we have under coverage. So my examples there are phone surveys, because you know the people call and want you to answer a bunch of questions, especially right now I get lots of calls about whether I'm going to vote and who I'm going to vote for. No, they've switched, from, they've switched from calling people to texting. Now, I hate getting those text messages. I am going to vote. <laughs> so, if it's a phone survey, what people are going to be left out? People who don't have phones. Old people. <laughs> Oh, oh goodness. Uh, Miss Little? Yes. Do you know how Bell's like hates old people? Yes. Do you hate old people too? Whoa. Whoa. Why does he hate No hate comment? He like literally hates old people. Why? Okay, some old people are really rude. Yeah, no, that's true. And, and they think that because but they're old, you, have they? <laughs> some of them. Some have. They're still old. They're just old. They're like 98 years 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 old. They're like Everything was given to them. All right. <laughs> she said some old people have lived very lush, luscious lives and they had everything handed to them and have no reason to be grumpy. So, all right. Um, what other people would be left out of phone surveys? I, I don't think this is a very common like thing. I really feel like this this unit. Are we only talking about adults here? We're we're talking about phones. I don't know what cerebral palsy has to do with. <laughs> I'm gonna feel old. Back when we had landlines and that was a thing every household had, you could be unlisted, like your phone number was not public. And so people who did phone surveys couldn't get in touch with you. Yeah, we don't have that anymore, so. Right? Okay, well, you can be on the don't call list. Don't text list? Yeah. You can, you can, um, <clears throat> Usually they have some way for you to like opt out. Unlisted. Unlisted. I can't write and talk. Household surveys are another type of survey. I actually um, brought one with me. Yeah, that I got <clears throat> in the mail. It's called a household survey. Colton Morgan. Okay. I got this survey 
in the mail. You can make a difference. Um, they. <laughs> They send <laughs> this letter with it, Why and they so because it's been in my bag. They try to make it random with this statement right here. Have an adult, age eighteen plus, who had the most recent birthday. So that way they're making it random. It is. Yeah, what are you doing? That they do send you cash. A dollar. They no. sent you a single. Oh, that is sad. No but, way. But if you, Nobody you know, did. think a dollar's worth filling out this 32 uh, page, yeah, 32 pages survey and mail it back in, they the money. next time they put two dollars in. Actually, how do you mail stuff back? For real? I don't know. I've only ever gotten to two dollars, and then they send me really like I do the short surveys. I have no problem doing the short survey for them. But when it's thirty-two pages, it's like no, not going to. Um, I honestly got this one last year, and I went. I'm not filling out thirty-two pages, but this is a great example to bring into class, and they haven't sent me one since. And you didn't take the dollar in either? Oh. You just left the dollar in there? Well, I wanted to show you how much, because Brooke even was like, they send you cash? That's what her eyes locked in on. She was like, I'll do surveys for money, but it's, it's a buck. So That's what if you do it? Like, I'll do a lot of stuff. Language barrier you want. I mean, some people don't um, even, like, they get the English ones. That's true. I had never thought of that. So My mom like has been getting English ones. So, Nashley made up, made up, brought up a good point that the household survey they send is English. And if you don't speak English, you could have a language barrier that would cause some people not to be able to do it. So, we'd have under coverage there. Who else is left out of household surveys? People without birthdays. <laughs> People without a house. Yes, without a birthday, you're kind of not the there. Address. Illegal people. Homeless people. Right. Homeless people. Wow. That was a nice day. People in. People without homes. Retirement homes? They have People addresses, in though. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, Caleb. Um, people who live in hotels, at least in education, in education, in education, somebody who lives in a hotel is considered homeless. Booyah! I don't know why. How are they homeless if they live in a hotel? Yeah. All right. You can ask your dad to explain to you. <laughs> An error that is made after the sample has already been determined is called a non-sampling error. And again, I abbreviate it because I'm lazy. You'll appreciate the abbreviations when you have to identify sampling and non-sampling errors in your homework tonight, and you don't have to write out all the words. When an individual who was chosen for a sample cannot be collected or refuses to participate, non-response, has occurred. So when I first mentioned phone surveys, a lot of you were like, you answered those? And no, I don't answer a phone call if I don't know who it's from. So that would be an example of non-response because I cannot be contacted. Yeah, 
Or people who answer and then are like, no, thank you, and hang up. Some, there's like this thing on my phones where if a random phone calls you, it sends them straight to voicemail to you. Mm -hmm. Or it tells you it says spammers. <laughs> No. No. What? You can't go to the bathroom. I heard what you said. You're sitting there for 10 minutes. 10 Dude. minutes, Caleb. I got like. No. Mm -mm. Stop going on. No. Mm -mm. I need to. A systematic pattern of incorrect responses in a sample survey leads to response bias. So that would be people who lie on purpose, liars. I hate liars. give the wrong answer on purpose to mess with data. Oh, I'm pretty sure, don't you, isn't that like a thing teenagers do? They answer the phone when they know it's like a, yeah, yeah. and yeah. then you mess with them. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Yeah. Especially, I might get angry. In a sample survey, careful attention must be shown to wording. You don't want the wording of your question to lead them to a certain answer or mislead them. You have to be really careful with how you word things. Down below, I have some sample questions like you'll see in your homework. Can I move it up? So the top half says a researcher wants to estimate the average distance that students at a large community college live from campus. To find out, she surveys an SRS of students from the registrar's database. Part A, will the researcher's sample result be exactly the same as the true population mean? No. Why? No. <laughs> because. Population. Say that again? Well, if we pick a good sample, it should mirror the population it well. Just, well, it mirrors it, but it doesn't yeah, all the population's data. So would it be similar? Yeah. same. It should be similar, especially if our sample mirrors the population well. Uh, the math term for it not being exactly the same is sampling variability. That term will come up on your test. A new NMHS app. Wait, app? Yeah. There's a lot of ask questions in my app. Oh, it's called All right. Yeah. Part B, which would be more likely to get the researcher's sample result closer to the true population value? 
an SRS of 100 students or an SRS of 50? 100. Why? Because it's more yeah, but what if there's only 50 people in school? No, it's using the words. 100. 100. Yes. 100 is better. Yeah, that's right. What? Bigger <laughs> sample sizes are always better. 
am I off the screen? Thanks. Paper over? No. Nope. Okay. Yes. Why is it doing all this? I'm going to go with I can flip it over. Yes. All right. One more example problem. A study in El Paso, Texas looked at seatbelt use by drivers. Drivers were observed at randomly chosen convenience stores. After they left their cars, they were invited to answer questions that questions that I have a bad typo there. Sorry. Answer questions about seatbelt use. In all, 75 percent said they always used seat belts, yet only 61 and a half percent were wearing seat belts when they pulled into the store parking lots. Explain the reason for the bias observed in the response to the survey. Do you expect bias in the same direction in most surveys about seat belt use? Okay, first part, why would people say that they use seat belts more than they actually do. Okay, so you think they would lie because Okay. Avoiding consequence Any other reasons you guys might think of? When they get in the park, they probably take their seatbelt off. When they say pull in. Yeah. Yeah, when they pull in. But, okay, but we're going to assume that if they didn't have their seatbelt on when they pulled in, they didn't have it on at all. Do people not have cars that, like, do you can turn it off. Some car belt. I think Trey just told us he has some RSC belt. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's not like that. I'm not a seatbelt. Why not? I'm picking on you, Trey. <laughs> Most new cars ding. Yeah. Um, my car dings if the passenger doesn't have their seatbelt on. My dad has a newer car than me. His doesn't ding if the passenger doesn't have. Yeah. He was actually upset and was like, why doesn't it do that? But they said it's just not something they built into some models. For the passenger. I think if your airbag is off, it doesn't do either. Well, yeah, it's like weight. Yeah. Because the bypass your one doesn't change. It's just weight. Yeah, it's just the seatbelt's off. All right. So we talked about why we have bias, and you guys said yes when I first asked the question, do you expect bias in the same direction about seatbelt use? You guys said yes. What could we do to eliminate the bias? Make it anonymous. And I shouldn't have said eliminate because we don't know for sure that it would eliminate bias, but it would probably help reduce the bias. Anonymous. Um, the termites. Mm -hmm. 
Seriously. There are termites in the wall. Wait. Seriously. I seriously, there are termites in the wall. They don't make that big of a noise. Are you sure? Have you ever met a termite? Yes. That big. They're not very big. All right. <laughs> Are there any questions before I let you guys work on the exit tasks slash your homework? Questions? No. No? Ah, that was easy. Oh my goodness, mouse. You need to work. Mm -hmm.